Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this video we're going to take a look at a couple of examples where we graph a logarithmic function that's got a vertical and or horizontal shift to it. Now in a previous video we talked about how to graph the basic logarithmic functions, now we're going to move them around the graph. So our first example of the two is f of x equals log base 2 of the quantity x minus 5 plus 3. So the base here is 2. And the basic points that we use in a log graph are a comma 1, which here would be 2 comma 1, 1 comma 0, and then 1 over a comma negative 1, 1 over 2, or 1 half, comma negative 1. So if we were graphing the basic log base 2 of x function, we would put those three points on the graph. We would put a vertical asymptote on the y-axis, and we'd be done. However, there are some shifts that are going on here. The horizontal shift comes from h equals 5. 5 is being subtracted from x. The vertical shift k equals 3. That's the number that's being added outside of the logarithm. So when h is 5, that shift is 5 to the right. And when k is 3, that shift is 3, let's say, upward. So each of these points is going to move 5 to the right and up by 3. So if we add 5 to each x-coordinate, and 3 to each y-coordinate, we'll get our new points. So add h equals 5 to x, add k equals 3 to the y-coordinate. 2 plus 5 is 7, 3 plus 1, I'm sorry, 1 plus 3 is 4. So we've got a point at 7, 4, that would be about there. 1, 0 is going to become 6, 1 plus 5, 3, 0 plus 3, 6, 3. Finally, 1 half negative 1 becomes 5 and 1 half, comma, 2, adding 5 and 3. So 5 and 1 half, 2. What about the asymptote? The asymptote was at x equals 0. We're going to need to shift that 5 to the right. So the vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals 5. And then we draw the curve that goes with it. Now, if we had graphed the original graph, I'm going to show you what that would have looked like in red. We would have had a point at 2. 1, 1, 0, and 1 half negative 1 with an asymptote on the axis. It'll look like this. Those shifts take that red graph, move it 5 to the right, and up by 3 to produce the blue graph. All right, let's try one more. This time we have f of x equals log base 1 third of x plus 1, all minus 2. Now, that base of one-third tells us that the graph is going to be decreasing instead of increasing from left to right. The base A is one-third, so let's write that down. Our basic points are going to be one-third, comma, one, one, comma, zero, and the reciprocal of A, three, comma, negative one. The shifts x plus 1, this is really the same as x minus negative 1, so h is negative 1. That's 1 to the left. 2 is being subtracted, or we can think of it as adding negative 2. k is negative 2. Sorry about that, it's a little messy. k is negative 2, so that's down 2. So that means that we can subtract 1 from x and subtract 2 from y. 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. 
1 minus 2 is negative 1. So I've got a point at negative 2 thirds, negative 1. For 1, 0, subtracting 1 from x, that's 0. Subtracting 2 from y, that's negative 2. So 0, negative 2. And then finally, 3, negative 1. Subtracting 1 from 3, that's 2. Subtracting 2 from negative 1, that's negative 3. So we've got a point at 2, negative 3. Where does the asymptote belong? It was on the y-axis, but we're shifting everything one unit to the left. Just draw that in red. That's the vertical asymptote. x equals negative 1. And now we can draw the graph going through those three points and approaching the asymptote as we move to the left. So again, we can see it's decreasing the way it's going down to the right. We took the basic graph, which let me just sketch where that would have been in, let me just pick a different color. I'm gonna use green. We had a point at one third, one, one zero, Three, negative one would have looked something like this approaching that asymptote and then we moved it uh, one unit to the left and down by two right. that's how you graph uh, and for every basic function we learn to graph these shifts horizontal and vertical translations can be used on any of those types of graphs as we move forward